Welcome to Dependable Flame, where we explore vintage petrol lighters, ashtrays, tobacchiana, and other useful mechanisms. Make yourself at home. Today we are going to re-wick this Thorin semi-automatic double claw petrol lighter. I couldn't get a hold of it to get that wick out so that's what we're going to do now is start pulling the wadding out of here just as usual to replace the wick and wadding in this vintage Evans semi-automatic double claw petrol lighter it wouldn't make much difference if it was a single or double claw except for maybe the fill hole is on the side on some models it's just a matter of getting this wadding out and I've never done an Evans or I'm sorry Thorin's before to know whether this is likely to come out in big chunks or small pieces and it's looking like maybe medium sized pieces <laughs> If you enjoy watching videos about repairing old petrol lighters, ashtrays, tobacchiana, and other useful mechanisms, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video you're watching. Tell your friends about the channel. Hit the share button. Send that link off in a text. Post it on social media. However it is that you communicate with folks nowadays and let them get a look at it for themselves I really hate doing this by the way you can leave any comments or questions below the video we would also appreciate it if you would follow and like Dependable Flame and DependableFlame.com across all the social media platforms that will be Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and of course eBay. Would be a shame for that to break now. Sure looks like it's about the only way it's going to happen. Oh, there we go. Maybe if we choose one side or the other. Oh well. Let's go ahead and get the wick out. Doesn't look horrible, but it also doesn't look the cleanest. And now let's may have to put the wadding back and try to sort of have a, a bottleneck like you get in traffic sometimes you get too much of this wadding wanting to come up at one time and there's just only one place for it to go and that's either out the hole or back down it can't all come through the hole it's gonna have to go back down first so anyway try to get it back up here Hopefully get a skinny in first. Alright. Like the way that sounded. And that looks like it's empty. So yeah, it's empty. So we ought to be able to put a wick down it. I am planning on using a an Imco wick. I just uh, just can't get past in a closed tank lighter. 
something in my mind tells me it should always have the loose wick rather than this wire but if it were just to feed down real easy I might change my mind oh yeah you can see that went down pretty easy see if I can fish it pretty easily out the other end and in honor of my friend Giovanni Abasia I will have a Thorin's lighter here with a Zippo copper woven style wick which well I've never even re-wicked one of these before so they all just had what they had but they were the soft limp wicks like I just pulled out of it so here we go now we will hold this in place as I stuff I'm not gonna put the same wadding back I've got a length of the organic cotton coil here which is definitely more than I came out of the lighter and I'm gonna go ahead and split this in half and then I'm gonna split it again to make it easier getting back in there and I doubt if it take both strands probably just one we will see Go ahead and hold that in place so I don't lose it. Get the wick positioned. I don't know how important it is that it's necessarily running the length of the top or anything like that, but I don't want it just, you know, bunched up in any area. I want to make sure there's it's fairly evenly dispersed throughout the tank. So now we'll just go ahead and start feeding the wadding down in there ideally get a length of cotton and then eventually a little bit your wick to go down a little bit deeper and then more cotton getting about to where the wick won't go any further so try to concentrate on the cotton at this point I say you want it dispersed as evenly as possible but you know I'm not losing sleep over any of this stuff and some of these lighters have sawdust some of them have all kinds of materials in there I wouldn't get stressed out about how you are rewatting them or what you're rewatting them with so long as it works. You also don't want to get too crazy when you're rewatting one and just really poking hard down in there as some lighters you could be damaging internal components and you could also be damaging the case if it's pretty thin material so it looks like it's going to end up using about two-thirds of that which I'm happy with sorry that I've gone off camera a couple times here with this it's not intentional Make sure you get over to eBay and check out the DependableFlame.com store. Every purchase that you make there will benefit HDSA, Huntington's Disease Society of America, with at least 10% of each purchase going to the charity. We also run three penny start auctions each month, where 100% of the proceeds of those listings go to HDSA. I provide free shipping 
you, the high bidder, pay your money, which the entire proceeds of that listing will go to the charity. You get the lighter and everybody is happy. We will go ahead in honor of our friend Montas Chabi Bulinas. I'll go ahead and fuel this lighter up. While you're over there at eBay, follow and like the dependableflame.com store so that you get the notification each time I put another lighter up for sale. And of course I overfilled this lighter. Nothing new there. Also here on the YouTube channel, make sure that you hit the bell so you're notified each time we publish a new video. If you do something like this where you end up leaking fuel, make sure before you go to striking anything, wipe it up. Let the air dissipate before you go to lighting, uh, striking anything around that open fuel. I say that with a Zippo can next open right next to me. But that big mess of fuel right here in the middle. Anyway, let's see if this will light up for us. Until next time.